Hey team, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can very quickly get the Arbitrum Quick Start project up and running. You can see on the documentation here, I'm going to the Arbitrum Quick Start guide. And what we're going to do is index the total claim the dividends paid to users on the 1R staking contract on the Arbitrum network. Let's first jump into step one under create a new project because I want to check the dependencies or the prerequisites that we need already installed. You can see that we need node, docker, and the subquery CLI. So what we can do is let's jump into Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to run a quick check called node-v. I've got node installed, so it returns back a version. If you don't have this installed, you won't get this result, so you'll have to go and install it. And if you've got brew, you can very easily say brew install node. Otherwise, go to the website and download node first. After this, you want to make sure you've got Docker as well. So again, a quick search to install Docker. And then finally, the subquery CLI. To check this, you can go sub QL-V. And here I'm running version 1.11. If you don't have this, jumping back to the documentation, you can run npm, which is the node package manager, install dash g for global at sub ql forward slash cli. Now, just a note that you want to have node installed first before installing the cli because the node package manager comes after you install node. So once we've got all the dependencies, let's go ahead and create a very first subquery starter project. Inside VS Code, let's run subql init. This is the most basic command that you should know in order to create a template project. Let's give it a name such as arbitrum example, hit enter. And then I get given an option to select the network family. And there are quite a few to choose from. I'm going to select arbitrum here. Let's select the arbitrum network. And then I've got two options, either arbitrum nova or Arbitrum 1. Now, there are minor differences between these. Arbitrum 1 is the initial network that was created, and this works using a technology called optimistic rollups. Arbitrum Nova is slightly different where it sacrifices trust for an increase in speed. Now, if you want to know more about this, feel free to Google this. However, in this example, we're going to create an Arbitrum 1 project. So I'll select this. And then now you can see on the left hand side, I've got a whole bunch of files and folders that have automatically appeared. And this is because it helps scaffold or provide a framework for the project so you can get up and running really quickly. The next few commands, I have to specify various parameters and the part in yellow will be the default if I leave it blank. So I'm going to just accept the defaults here And there we have it, a very simple startup project to start building our real project. The next step after this is to go ahead and install our dependencies. So I want to CD or change directory into my project directory and simply run yarn install. Now this may take a few minutes, so I'll catch you back after it's completed. Let's go ahead and look at our first file of interest, which is the project.yaml file, otherwise known as the manifest file. And here you can see we've got the spec version defined, we've got the name of the project, we've got the description as well. Scrolling down, we've got the schema file, which I'll talk about shortly. In the network section, we've specified the chain ID, we've got an endpoint of where the data is coming from, and also we're putting to the dictionary as well for efficiency and speed. Now, all of this you won't have to change at all. It's the data sources section that you will have to update. So if we go back into the documentation here, let's jump into the Arbitrum project again. And inside step one, our project manifest file, if I scroll down, you'll see that we've got this new data sources section that we want to copy out 
and then replace with the existing one. So let me do this. I'm going to select the existing section, delete it, paste this in and save it. And you can see here, we're actually starting at block 91 million. We're pointing at the smart contract address for the Winar staking contract, referencing a Winar staking ABI file, which we'll get shortly. And then down below, we've got one particular handler called the handle dividend batch. And the way this works is that whenever there is a claim dividend batch topic that has been triggered on the Arbitrum blockchain, this handler will be triggered and effectively it's like a function. So if I go back to the documentation here and check out the manifest file section, you can see that the documentation here outlines the meaning of the various fields. So if I scroll down, you can see here the definition of the name, version, description, runner, repository, etc. And then if I scroll down further, it helps me understand what the chain ID is, the endpoint, the port, the dictionary. And then going down into the data sources section, you'll see that we've got three different handlers, the block, transaction, and log. We're using the log handler, therefore we've got the topics filter being used, which when it gets triggered, it will fire off the function called handle dividend batch, which we'll see shortly how this works. So after we've modified the manifest file, we'll move on to the next part, which will be the schema file. This schema file, you can see on the left-hand side here, schema.graphql. At the moment, the default starter project has the transfer and approval entity. But what we'll do is we'll copy over the required schema file for our project. So scrolling onto step number two, the schema file you can see basically determines the shape of your data from subquery. So let's go ahead and copy this and then I'll explain how it works. I'll select all, delete, and then paste. Now, what this means is that we've got two entities called dividend and user, and you can think of an entity as like a database table, because effectively that's what it is under the hood. The fields within the entities, these are basically the columns of your database. And you can see here we're indexing things like block height, timestamp, user, etc. And what's interesting here is that we've got an entity relationship. So here we've got dividend, which is of type dividend. You can see up here. And we've also got this derived from field. Now, what does this all mean? Well, let's jump into the trusty documentation and then we'll go and take a look at the GraphQL schema documentation. Now, the first thing to note is that each entity should define an ID field, which is required, hence the exclamation mark, and this serves as the unique primary key. Other supported scatter types include ID and string that you can see on screen. And then, as mentioned, we've got an entity relationship. So entities often have nested relationships within other entities, and then setting the value to another entity will define the relationship between these two entities. So if I go down here to the entity types, you can see here a one-to-one -one relationship. We've got a person and passport, but then a one-to-many is where one person can have many accounts. And you can see this because the account has a person field which references the person entity here. Now, again, you see that we've got this derived from field. And what this is, is actually a reverse lookup. So a reverse lookup creates a virtual field on an entity that can then be queried upon. So here the transfer from is accessible from the account entity object via the sent transfer field because it's effectively derived from the from field. So what this means is that the dividends field here is actually derived from the user up above. So now we've got the schema file updated. The final step is to update our mappings file. The mappings file is where all the action happens. It's where we can transform and massage our data. 
So if we go to the source directory under mappings, you can see we've got a file called mappinghandlers.ts. And what I'll do here is let's go into the documentation once more. And I'll go back to the quick start guide because in step number three, we want to copy out the example mapping function. So let me copy this and then I'm going to remove what we have at the moment, paste the new one in. And then looking at this, you can see we've got a bunch of imports up above. And then we've got two functions, the check get user and the handle dividend batch. Now, this handle dividend batch function we've seen before. It's been referenced in the handler in our manifest file. So this is what gets triggered whenever the project sees an event, a log on the blockchain. So what it effectively is doing is we've got this batch dividend log variable of type claim dividend batch log. And inside we create a new instance, a new object, assigning the various parameters such as block height, timestamp, user ID, etc. from the batch dividend log variable. And just above this, we've got this check get user. So this is the helper function, which is the function up above here. And all it does is it tries to get the user ID. If there is no user, if it doesn't exist, it will then first of all create one before returning the user in order to assign the user ID. And finally, down below, we've got user.total reward, and this is just a cumulative summation of the dividend.reward variable. So there we have it, a very simple mappings file. The final step is to go ahead and compile this code, run it, and then test it. To run the project, the first thing we want to do is run yarn code gen. What this does is it generates the types and you can see here we've got an error because a particular file called winrstaking.abi does not exist. So the way to fix this is if we go to our project.yaml file, you can see that this is the file it's looking for in our abis directory. And here we've got a file called erc20. This is the default one. So I'm going to have to rename this. So let me copy this. And then I'll rename this here like so. And I'm going to delete the contents. And you might be wondering, where do I get the new ABI file from? Well, I'll copy the smart contract address. And let's go into the Arbitrum Arbiscan Block Explorer. I'm going to do a search for this particular smart contract. And here you can see I've got a contracts tab. And let me scroll down. There should be a section. Here we are, contract ABI. So let me copy this to the clipboard. Go back to my file here and then paste this in. Let me format this and then save it. So now I've got my new ABI file or the application binary interface. So if I run yarn code gen again, it runs successfully. Now after this, I want to build it. So let's go yarn build. And that has worked. And then the final step is to run yarn start docker. And if I hit enter here, I've got docker running in the background. You should see that I've got the various images being pulled down and then the node starting up. Now, while this is loading, let's go back to our documentation because I want to grab the actual example query. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to head over to localhost 3000. This is the playground. You can see the blocks are starting and I've got the playground appearing. Let me paste in my query here like so, hit run. And you can see we've got some data coming back. So that is really good news. Let me stop the node in the background here because I am using a public endpoint and I might hit the rate limit. But let's do a quick a double check where I can see I've got 
a reward value here. If I go and copy this particular ID out, going back into the Arbitrum Explorer, let's paste this in. And if I do a quick comparison, you can see here I've got 12.37, 12.37 as the reward. There's no decimal places, uh, and that's just how the number is represented on the blockchain. And then the user ID here, I've got 9FD5, I've got 9FD5 here as well. And this is actually representing the to address. I could also index the from address. I could include the blockchain height as well. So for instance, I can go block height. And if I run this, it'll also appear. Um, it won't work now because I've turned off the actual node. But there you have it. A very simple example of how to get the Arbitrum Winar staking contract. If I go back to the guide here. Indexing the total claimed dividends paid to users on the Arbitrum network.